once and made this. My name is Michael, I cook vegan food, and today I'm going to be cooking a really quick and easy Japanese-inspired kabocha squash hot pot. I'm gonna be doing this in my One Take Wednesday style, which hasn't, I haven't done one of these videos in a while, and it's never actually come out on a Wednesday, so this will be the very first One Take Wednesday that actually comes out on a Wednesday. Um, so I've got everything that I need for this delicious kabocha squash hot pot, and essentially what it is is just like a one-pot meal. Um, it's this really delicious, brothy, vegetable-heavy, um, stew essentially um, that is made with kabocha squash and it's all going to happen in this one pot. So I have a two quart pot here um, and I've already got the heat on because I'm trying to use this little burner here which is an electric burner um, just for ease of filming. So I've already got it on and I'm adding two cups of broth and what this is is just two cups of water that I have added on um, some of this it's called a uh, tasty mushroom flavor granulated mushroom bouillon. Uh, if you follow the link below to my Amazon page, you'll see under like foods and seasonings, um, this if you want this. You could use any flavor of vegetable broth. Um, you could even just use like a better than bouillon vegetable or uh, no chicken flavor as well. So I've already got two cups of my broth here. Uh, I'm gonna be using fresh mushrooms today, but if you wanted to use dried mushrooms in this, you definitely could. Um, so you want to add like one or two of these into the broth right now. Um, this is some kale, which will come in a bit later. And um, the thing I need to address right here is the kabocha squash. So let's put this lid on. Um, these are some other things that will be going in there that are already cut up. And we're going to be using some silken tofu today. So this kabocha squash was whole just a moment ago. So it would be like this. And uh, you could probably use like a butternut squash. I'm not sure what other, maybe a delicata squash. You definitely want a squash that you can leave the skin on just so that it uh, holds its integrity. And to cut this, what I did was I took the whole squash. I put my knife in very near the stem end, went all the way down, flipped the squash over with the knife still in it very carefully, cut through the other side and around the top, and then uh, at the stem end, because you can't really penetrate this with your knife, I just split it open. We're only going to be needing half today. The other half I'm going to save. I have a soup recipe uh, that I put out like at the beginning of summer. It's a green curry, kabocha squash, and chickpea soup. I'll have that linked above here. Um, but this would be perfect for the other half of that squash. Um, I need to seed this really quick, so um, let's just use this. The seeds you can actually use to roast. Um, and so I'll be saving these to do that. Um, otherwise you can compost them. <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, whenever I've composted squash seeds, um, they usually grow squash plants. So just taking the seeds out. Okay. So to cut this squash, um, I like to think of doing everything just like cutting in half and then cutting the half and half and cutting the half and half. So I'm kind of just putting my knife into the center. Sorry, I don't have close-ups with this style. Uh, putting my knife into the center, going back to the center point, going the other way. So now I have two halves, and I'm just going to continue to cut each half in half. By the end of this, I want to get like one inch little pieces. Um, I call them like two bite-sized pieces. Um, and if you don't cut all the way through, but you can break it, that's kind of a fine way to deal with squash as well. Make sure your knife is sharp. Make sure you know where your fingers are at all times. Uh, I also wash this ahead of time too. So continuing to go into halves. This is probably the last half that I'll do. So I guess each half of the squash gets cut into eight pieces and then we'll cut little cubes and triangles out of those. My uh, spaghetti squash video, I show you how to, um, which I'll link above also, I show you how to cook a spaghetti squash from whole. And uh, I've had people ask if that can be done with other squash as well. Um, it can, but for this particular recipe here, um, I would recommend doing it uncooked. Hi, Odie. Odie came in to say hi. We're not sure what's wrong. He's been limping the last couple days. Uh, he and Hopper have been playing quite hard, so 
Hopefully he doesn't have like a play injury. All right, um, I cut also off just like the little bit of the bottom end as well. So I have my squash here cut into the half, cut into eight pieces, and now I'm just gonna cut these into one inch pieces. Um, other things that are gonna go into this, I mentioned mushrooms earlier, and actually as this uh, comes to a simmer, you really do wanna add your squash in before your water or broth comes to a boil just so that um, it's just help with the cooking time. This is gonna cook for 15 minutes covered. Um, hopefully also, I'm able to get uh, this entire half of a squash in here. Um, the recipe does call for a half of a kabocha squash, but they do obviously grow in different sizes. So, And this pot is gonna be pretty full. When we're done, we're gonna have it up to the very top, but that's okay because it gives us the ability to simmer the squash, to steam the tofu. Um, the mushrooms are gonna simmer in the broth as well, and that's gonna help season the broth. Um, so yeah, kale and tofu, steam on top, everything else simmers in the broth. And uh, what else is going in here? Oh, I have some um, green onion as well. Green onion is gonna go in separated. Half of that will go into the broth. The, the white parts will go into the broth to simmer, to season the broth, and the green parts, oops. Okay, thanks for the pups. Uh, and the, let's grab a spurtle. I meant to grab a spurtle, grab something else. Um, the goal here is to get this submerged. I think I can only handle one more. Okay. So I don't have enough room for this last piece. I'll use it in the soup. So I'm going to try to get this as submerged as possible. It looks like I could add a little bit more water, so I'm just going to... Um, Oops. Use another cup, because I put seeds in the last one. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water, just so that my squash is pretty much fully submerged. Okay, mushrooms. I pre-sliced these yesterday. Um, this is the white part of the green onion, as well as a little bit of garlic. So putting that in there. And then I have these mushrooms. This is just about like three cremini mushrooms. I don't know if you can see it very well, but we're reaching the top. And try to get the mushrooms down in there as best that you can. So they'll simmer in the broth, they'll season the broth. So these will go aside, those will be for the soup. Let's talk tofu. Um, this is the green part of the green onion, so I'll save that. So let's talk tofu here. This is a uh, nigari silken tofu. There is a tofu video coming out soon. I promise it's filmed, we just haven't edited it yet. A little bit of tofu juice will be fine here. Um, in that, I show you how to cut open one of these packages of silken tofu. And you basically just want to cut off all the corners. And these are my kitchen scissors that I use for food purposes. Cut across. Alright. And then I should be able to slide this out. Now I'm going to use most of this block of silken tofu and I'm going to cut it into thin slabs and this is just going to go across the top of the hot pot. And these are maybe a quarter inch thick. I'm going to just get the rest in here or try to. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Mm. 
All right, tofu is fully on top. Let me wipe my hands here. Green onion. And this is gonna help, oh, Odie, or that's Hopper, Hopper. <laughs> Had to stop a pup from uh, eating some green onion. All right, and kale. This is just my salad spinner. I have two bunches of kale in here. I'm not gonna use anywhere near this amount. So I'm just gonna place this on top, probably about a cup worth. So this is a two quart pot, holds eight cups of liquid. Little more full than I would like, but hey. So this is going to come up to a simmer. Uh, once this comes, once I start to see it steaming as if it's boiling, I'm going to turn it down to low and it's going to cook for 15 minutes on low. Um, I know this is a one take Wednesday, but I'm going to turn off the camera now and then uh, I'll come back when the 15 minutes are up. We're about 10 minutes into this and admittedly it is sort of like slightly overflowing and, and sizzling a little bit, but you know what? I probably should have trusted my instincts initially. Uh, it's always been two cups of water. I got a little bit uh, worried that two cups wasn't enough, so I added a little bit more, so I probably should have just stuck to the two cups. And you're probably wondering, why you don't use a larger pot? Well, this one's cute, I guess. That's my reason. Uh, this recipe is inspired by uh, Donabe cooking, I believe is how you say it. It's a Japanese cooking vessel, uh, and it's good for a lot of these kind of like one pot style dishes. Um, I'm, I'm a person that likes cooking gear and uh, cooking utensils, devices, pots. Um, and uh, I've been wanting one, but I haven't bought one, so uh, I just decided to use this because it seemed like a similar size and shape to that. Um, so that's why I'm using this, that's why it's slightly overflowing, but if you have one that's exactly this size, uh, I mean it's not like overflowing, I feel like I'm making excuses here. Uh, I should use a larger pot, although this one works perfectly, I should have just stuck with the two cups. If you have a larger pot, you could have a little bit more, uh, but yeah, we still have about four four minutes left of this. Um, you could start checking this at about 10, 12 minutes, um, depending on how densely layered you have this. Um, you just want the squash to be cooked through. So as soon as the squash is beautifully tender, fork tender, your dish is done. Um, this is my first time using this little electric stove for this dish, so I'm gonna let it go all the 15 minutes because I just don't know how evenly um, or well this is heating. So I'll be right back as soon as my 15 minute timer is up. Uh, the 15 minutes is up. If the light looks different, it's because my door is open because Hopper's refusing to come in. He's sun tanning. Uh, I carefully took this off the burner and put it on a little trivet, a little cork trivet thing. Um, so I'm ready to serve this. I have not opened it. I have not uh, seen what it looks like in here, but I guarantee it's going to be gorgeous. Um, yesterday, I also made some soba noodles. Now he comes in. Uh, I also made some soba noodles. You can serve this dish with noodles. So it's kind of like a ramen broth that's full of all these other veggies and tofu. Um, or I like it just as is, and this would probably serve like two as a main course, maybe three. If you're doing it as like a side, you could probably serve four people. I've been hungry enough to eat this entire thing, and I haven't felt guilty about it. So let's open this up and um, see what it looks like. And I'm going to uh, move the camera in just a moment. Well, I'm going to insert a clip in here right now of you looking at this close up. It's beautiful, right? Uh, I'm going to dish it up. I'm going to change the camera angle, dish it up, and uh, give it a taste. I'll be eating this entire thing, or probably not the entire thing. Uh, I'll be eating this on my months and eight in a months and eight this video. So if you click join down below, you can join the channel membership, and you'll have access to all the months and eight this videos. This might be number fifty, um, or you can join the Patreon as well to have access to all those. The full recipe for this is going to be on MonsonMadeThis.com, or if you are a channel member here on YouTube, you actually get a PDF of the recipe without any ads. So um, that's all for me here. Uh, in, in live Munson, you'll see me trying this, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Is that confusing with all the 
Anyways, uh, if you want more One Take Wednesdays, uh, let me know down below, even though this is now a few different takes. Live cooking, am I right? All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, wait, stop. I also have sesame seeds. Let's put sesame seeds on top. Which now you'll have already seen. Okay, whatever. Bye. Uh, I dished up some of this so I could show you all. It's beautiful. It smells incredible. The squash is perfectly tender. And I do love kabocha squash roasted, but simmered in a broth is incredible as well. So have a little bit of the tofu, a little bit of the squash, a little bit of the kale. It's hot. Kabocha is perfectly squashed. 15 minutes. Wait. Kabocha is perfectly squashed. Cute. Uh, kabocha is perfectly cooked. So that 15 minutes, I think, is the magic number. And that's after it's come to a boil and you reduce it to low to simmer. Mm. It's so light, but yet rich at the same time. This would be great with a drizzle of sesame oil. And one of my favorite things to add, too, which I'll do when I finish eating this, is... Uh, hot sauce, like Tabasco or some sort of, I know that sounds weird, but like a vinegar based hot sauce. It was really nice with this. Mm. All right, well, I'm gonna take pictures of this, make it look pretty for the thumbnail, which you saw before you clicked on this video. And then uh, I'll be eating this on my months and eight this video. I always say that in a months and eight this video, whatever. Delicious, make this for yourself. Ryan Little <laughs>